Amy, 8, meticulously cleansed the yard of hogweed one late autumn evening before going inside to rest. Amy had been raised by her grandmother since she was a child, and she now lived alone when her grandma passed away. Amy returned to her room every day after doing her tasks, battling the overwhelming loneliness. A rustling noise near the door shocked her as she leaned on her bed, on the point of sleep after the lights were turned off. Amy listened, alert and prepared with a stick, initially assuming it was a wild cat. However, the unmistakable and approaching footsteps suggested otherwise. Amy, terrified, grasped her stick and crept behind the door. Outside footsteps stopped, and cats meowed in their place. Amy's uneasiness grew as she realized the meows were an impersonation. She didn't dare to breathe when she noticed the window being pulled open, and a dark figure entered. Amy swung her stick automatically, striking something squishy. She caught a glimpse of the man's terrifying face in the faint moonlight, marred by two deep scars from the eyes to the mouth. Amy's astonishment intensified as another invader appeared. The man grabbed her and muffled her calls for aid. The man's features were illuminated by the moonlight, he was a scary, towering figure with a thick beard. Amy was subdued and chained as she watched the man, identified as Daniel, light a lamp. He disregarded any possibility of rescue, emphasizing his authority. Amy, understanding Daniel was a prisoner, gave up her useless battle when she realized how dangerous the situation was. Daniel, dissatisfied with the absence of valuables, inquired about food, pointing out the poverty in prison. Amy, who was now terrified, motioned to the rice container under the bed, where a bit of bacon remained. Daniel, amused, grabbed the bacon and devoured it, his mouth oily and contentment visible. With his free hand, he massaged Amy's face, chuckling about how he hadn't tasted meat like this in years. Amy remained immobilized with dread and under his power. He went to the kitchen, and Amy's eyes filled with horror as the minutes passed. The smell of blood on them convinced her that these were not good people. Ida, the neighbor outside the door, spoke up, breaking the tense situation. Daniel quickly returned to Amy's side, a knife at her waist and a pair of scissors in hand, motioning for her to open the window. He told her not to talk out of turn and then untied the ropes around her hands. Daniel told Amy to calm down just as she was ready to open the window, halting her with his hand and pressing on his chest. After dismissing Ida, Daniel examined all the doors, fastening them with wooden sticks before confidently leaving. Amy had a tremendous sense of despair as she watched him leave, reflecting on her fragility at only eight years old and her uncertainty about Daniel's intentions. Amy was surprised when she heard a faint sound at the door, it was Cassie. A two-meter tall male lion crouched at the house door in the dark night, patiently waiting for the proper moment. Despite Cassie's presence, the closed door resisted even the strongest lion's attempts to break it open. Amy softly persuaded Cassie to find the village leader while relaxing herself. Daniel returned ten minutes later, content and full, glancing at Amy before taking the towel from her mouth. He held up the knife as a warning, urging her to remain silent. Amy mustered the fortitude to explain that she was the only one in her family and couldn't leave. Recognizing her sensitivity, Daniel proceeded cautiously to the restroom. Amy was still concerned about Cassie's ability to locate assistance. Cassie's distinct voice resonated outside the door as Daniel took a shower, joined by the village chief's calming presence. Amy, anxious for help, kicked the table near her in response to the commotion. The door was brutally kicked open, and Cassie rushed in, followed by the village leader and four shovel-wielding peasants. They rushed to Amy's rescue and quickly unfastened her. Amy informed them, relieved yet worried, that the assailant was in the adjacent toilet, armed with a murder weapon. The village head led the gathering to the restroom door, but despite the lack of activity inside, Cassie continued to warn. Addressing the aggressor, the village leader stated that they had five people, hunting tools, and a lion and urged him to surrender. 
A tremendous noise was made, and a figure leaped out of the rear window, disappearing. The pursuit ended when the assailant fled, and they returned to Amy's room. Ida ran in after hearing the commotion. Amy, overcome with emotion, embraced Ida and sobbed. Cassie's head was tenderly rubbed by the village chief, who acknowledged its part in Amy's safety. Cassie approached Amy's side with a pleased grin, relishing her soothing touch. Concerned about the assailant's possible return, they suggested Amy temporarily relocate next door for safety. They left, grateful for Cassie's protection, giving Amy a sense of comfort. Amy and Cassie hadn't seen each other in almost a year, and Amy, overcome with emotion at the reunion, decided to give Cassie a bath. Amy instantly fell asleep, reassured by Cassie's presence, despite the lingering terror from the horrible episode. Amy met Cassie, a wild lion, three years ago when she discovered her caught in a trap while caring to the village's cows in the highlands. Unfortunately, the lioness lost life as a result of significant blood loss. Amy hurriedly rushed away with the herd, fearful of the presence of other wolves. After a short distance, she heard a whimpering sound close to a trap. She turned back, expecting to discover a lifeless lion, and what she saw would make an indelible imprint on her life, a small lion, less than a month old, trapped. The cub stared inside at its lioness, releasing a series of sorrowful sounds to indicate the passing of its parents. Amy, who was just five years old at the time, felt profoundly for the young lion. She identified a similar misfortune in the cub, having grown up without the safety and love of a family. Amy hesitated but ultimately made a brave decision after observing its damaged limb and the absence of other lions. She approached the cub, reaching out hesitantly. To Amy's surprise, the lion cub put out its tongue and licked her fingers, devoid of the normal cruelty in its gaze. Amy, who was overwhelmed, picked it up and took it home, naming the cub Cassie. Amy's grandmother, who was concerned about Amy's future after her own health deteriorated, had no objections about Cassie being adopted. Amy hoped Cassie would make her feel less lonely and shield her from bullying. Amy, burdened with farm work and caregiving a year later, considered releasing Cassie back into the wild as her grandmother's health deteriorated further. Despite her reservations, Cassie adapted to living in the wild, finding a mate and returning on occasion. Cassie surprised Amy by returning with her own cubs, three gorgeous tiny lions. Cassie resumed daily hunting after leaving the cubs with Amy. It returned food for two years, forming an unusual friendship. Cassie didn't return to the wild with her pups until Amy married years later, marking the end of a wonderful chapter in their shared life. That's all about the first story and now let's watch another similar story. This is an amazing story about a girl who got stuck on a road in the snow. As children, wolves often appear as villains in stories, menacing fictional characters such as Little Red Riding Hood and the Three Little Pigs. In reality, because humans have been persecuting wolves for centuries, most wolves are afraid of humans and avoid encounters with humans. Although there is no doubt that wolves can easily take human life, from the statistical data, the threat of wolves to human beings is negligible. That's not the only dramatic change for this former apex predator, many of which have gone against expectations. Many prey populations continue to rise even as wolves feed on them. For the early settlers, wolves were enemies, considered objects of loathing and repulsion in the wilderness itself. Now, while some free-spirited farmers have learned to live with the animals, others still want to do the old-fashioned way of driving wolves out of existence. When I looked back, the wolves were staring straight at me, their yellow-gray eyes seeming to sweep me all over my body. Just a dozen feet away, they were pacing about on their long legs, shaking their heads in a strange way. Siberia is characterized by its vast and dense forests that stretch for hundreds of kilometers. This vast province in the south of Russia has many rivers and animals. The animals have the ability to cope with harsh weather conditions, especially the snow that covers the mountains all year round. 
Wolves are one of the most common animals that inhabit these forests, where they thrive in large numbers thanks to the beauty of nature. The story follows a young woman named Sophia who lives with her family in a village in the city of Krishnadar in northern Siberia, Russia. About 18 years ago, this young woman met a young man named Vadim, who lived in the same village, they fell in love, and despite some obstacles, but with the efforts of both of them, they finally managed to get married, the two young men raced against time to get married before Vadim entered the army. A week after the wedding, Vadim had to say goodbye to the woman he loved and leave for Moscow. The two were very happy, although their time together as a couple was brief, Vadim dreamed of becoming a fighter pilot in the Russian army since he was a child, and after he passed his exams and finally realized his dream, he began to think about moving his girlfriend Sofia to the capital Moscow and settling down. There. Vadim was away for more than 10 months, during which time Sofia discovered that she was pregnant. He was overjoyed when he learned that his wife was pregnant and wrote to Sofia often, telling her he would try to get home before she gave birth. But unfortunately, practical training for the pilot was organized during this period, which prevented him from leaving the camp no matter what happened, otherwise he would lose his job. The husband was very worried about his wife. At this time, the wife was alone at home, and the snow was falling heavily, and the weather was extremely cold. He tried to contact his parents who lived in a nearby village and asked them to come to his wife and stay with her through that difficult time until his return. But his parents caught a cold at this time, and they couldn't travel long distances. On the day Sophia gave birth, Sophia was alone at home when she suddenly felt contractions. She got into a car by herself and drove to a maternity clinic in a city about 30 kilometers from her village. The young woman wanted to go to her friend and go with her to the hospital, but she wasn't home because she had a sick brother and she might be in town to see him. And Sophia didn't know that there wasn't enough gas in her car to drive her into town. As she was driving along a forested road, the car stopped suddenly in the middle of heavy snow, much to Sophia's dismay. Sophia was feeling more and more pain, and the visibility outside was decreasing due to the intense snowstorm. Even though Sophia got out of her car and tried to ask for help from the very few cars passing the road, everyone refused to stop. She found herself in an awkward position, not least because she was now in labor and was running out of strength. So Sophia went back into the car, where she was thinking about how she would give birth. She then got out of her car again and continued walking on the road. Suddenly she saw a pack of wolves coming towards her, which made her panic and hid behind a tree. Meanwhile, Sophia took off her coat and put it on the ground. Then she lay on the ground, closed her eyes, and kept praying to God to protect her little baby, almost to the point of despair. At this time, a big bad wolf came to her, and the wolves followed behind the big bad wolf. These wolves are trying to get to them, let's pray for them. The powerful and predatory wolf howled before them, making Sophia turn her head. The wolves noticed that the woman was pregnant, and all this time the wolves stood by Sophia's side as if to protect her. After a while, wolves approached and surrounded the young woman, protecting her and waiting for her to give birth. Sophia couldn't believe what was happening as her panic turned to comfort and she calmed down and went into labor. The young woman screamed loudly as it was her first childbirth and after a while she was quiet and a small baby was lying on the coat while she put the coat on the floor and the baby started crying loudly. The snow fell heavily and completely covered the mother. The little baby was still crying, and the snowflakes were slowly falling on him. The wolf noticed that the mother was not moving because she was completely frozen, but the baby was still moving. So the wolf took the baby in his arms and covered him with his body to protect him from the cold of the wind and snow. While the other wolves surrounded the mother and kept the woman warm, after a while the woman woke up. When Sophia found herself among the wolves, she felt very anxious and panicked. Noticing that her baby was not around, she thought the wolf had eaten him. But suddenly, she heard the cry of the baby, and when she got up, she saw that he was sleeping with the wolf. 
Sophia immediately rushed to embrace her son, and she kept kissing and crying, while the wolf watched her silently. What a special scene, in the snow, the young woman is holding her baby, protecting him from the cold, while the wolf is protecting them from the cold. The wolf turned and rubbed them slowly to keep them from the cold wind. Sophia watched the wolf in action and was shocked because the wolf didn't eat her baby. She decided to defend and protect the child. The wolf also seems to be happy and proud of what it did, because she is also a mother and knows the difficulties of a mother after giving birth. Afterwards, being so tired, Sophia slept with the wolves. When she woke up, she found that the snowstorm had completely stopped and her vision was clear. So she hugged her baby and got out of her car to find a solution to her car's problem. There she saw her husband's parents' car, which she parked next to the car they had come to find her. The husband's parents found her car was empty, so they waited there for her to return. At the same time, the wolves watched Sophia from a distance, and slowly approached them, leaving one after another when they were sure they were safe. Sophia looked at them with tears in her eyes. Afterwards, Sophia went to the hospital with her husband's parents, where she underwent the necessary medical tests, which revealed that she and the baby are doing well. After returning home, Vadim could not believe what had happened to his wife and son, and when he came to visit them, he heard Sophia tell what had happened and brought them to live in Moscow.